Hey guys, it's Barrett from the Gimping Camper. And we're here at Shelburne RV here in Cleveland, Tennessee. We're gonna do a project today on the camper and that project is gonna be putting a lift kit on. Did he just say put a lift kit on the camper? Yes, he said put a lift kit on the camper. Now you're not gonna have to get a can of backer and a step ladder out to get in this thing. It's not that redneck, but it is gonna solve some problems that we've been having. So this video is sponsored by Shelburne RV. There they are moving my camper right now to get it ready. But we're gonna do our intro a little bit different because they got some stuff going on. Basically, I'm gonna go over everything here and then I'm gonna go back and give Steve uh, the opportunity to say anything that he has to about what's going on. So you may be asking, why are we gonna do this? Well, I have a big problem and the problem is that the uh, suspension for the camper in my opinion, it's probably underrated for the camper. It's 4,400 pound springs and axles. The camper's weighted for almost 11,000 pounds. I know you get some of that weight transfer to the truck, but you know, I have had the suspension fail before. I had Camping World fix it that time under warranty. And in that inch and a half clearance, somebody is smart enough to run the wiring harness between the tire and the camper. So that did not make a lot of sense. Now Camping World did help me out there and they moved that wiring harness over to the frame. The odd part about that is there was enough room, enough slack just to do that without having to splice any wire. So I don't know why they don't do that from the factory. Now, when they fix it, it kept me going fine for a while, but now I've noticed some rubbing going on again. And so I'm looking for a permanent solution. So that permanent solution, we're, I had a few different ideas. We're gonna go through those in just a minute. I will say when I picked my camper up from Camping World, I didn't know anything about brandishing new brakes or anything at the time. And I noticed the brakes weren't working. So I stopped back up and talked to one of the RV techs there. And they told me that they did change the shackles to give me about another inch or so of lift. And they were hoping to do more for my problem then, but Keystone wouldn't approve it. So they could only do the work that Keystone approved and thus they said they hoped that it would work, but it wasn't exactly the way that they would have chose to fix it. Now, there's gonna be guys that say, well, your camper's just overweight. Well, I have weighed the truck by itself and the truck in the trailer. And so I'll show you those weights here. I was 160 pounds overweight on the camper once you deduct the weight of the truck. And I will say that I think a decent percentage of that overweight was from the new upgraded tires there because those Goodyear tires weigh quite a bit more than those Trailer King tires. But I don't know exactly how much, but I have went through and I've tried to take some weight out of the trailer. But I'm still wanting to do something to prevent this in the future. And that is obviously also with a dry tank. So if I put water in my tanks, it's gonna be overweight. All right, so let's talk solutions here. There's quite a few different solutions that I've thought about and I've come up with the, uh, the combination of solutions that's gonna work best for me and my situation and my budget. The budget's a big one on this because this stuff can get pretty expensive pretty quick. Now I'm gonna say the number one best solution in my opinion would be go with the Moride independent suspension with disc brakes. But you're talking, I think it's five or $6,000 when I looked that up. Yeah, that's, that's just not in the pocketbook right now. So that's not gonna happen. But I would say that that was gonna be the best. That's one of the best uh, upgrades that you can do for your suspension if you're looking for something to do. Second best option is gonna be to upgrade to 8,000 pound springs, axles, all that stuff. But by the time you do that, you're still looking at a few thousand dollars. You know, I just, don't really have a few thousand dollars laying around. I put money in this thing all the time. People act like I'm uh, making all this money on YouTube and that's not true. I'm making a decent amount of money right now, but it's all going in this camper. I'm definitely negative because I'm always working on this thing and I got the videos to prove it. Also, if you put 8,000 pound axles and springs on there, I believe you'd have to also get new tires because you're gonna have to get new wheels because those wheels aren't gonna match up with the hubs on the 8,000 pound axles from the 4,400 pound axles. I think there's more lugs on there. Uh, I think that also have to be more labor when they put it in because I'm pretty sure they'd have to move the spring hangers. I'm not 100% on that. I'm not a professional here. So the two economical solutions that I found for this is number one, to mount some Sumo springs between the frame and the springs. 
and that's going to stiffen that suspension up. Now with the SEMO springs, they actually sell three different versions of the spring for the 4,400 pound axles. They do recommend on their website, I believe it's the blue color, which is their lowest density. Um, they say that that's just going to help kind of smoothen the ride out a little bit. But in my situation, because the springs are a little bit too compressed, in my opinion, I talked it over with Steve here and we decided to go with the medium density spring, which is actually for the 8,000 pound axles. Um, but that's going to give it a little bit more rigidity. Now, you know, that, that could be good or bad. We'll talk about that in just a minute. The other solution I found on YouTube University here, and that was to uh, actually lift the camper up on a two inch lift block. I ran across this video. I'm going to post it up here in the uh, corner as well as down in the description but it was at a uh, suspension shop where they actually put two inch lift blocks between the springs and the axle so to raise it up a little bit. And then you just have to get a bigger U-bolt to attach all that stuff together. And so that didn't look too labor intensive and it didn't look like it would cost too much money. I don't see a whole lot of negativity there, but we'll go over the pros and cons in just a minute. So I was pretty sure that either one of these things would have fixed my problem. I think that the uh, SEMO springs would have made it where the springs didn't compress enough for the tires to rub on the camper. And I also think that lifting it up a couple of inches would have taken care of it. But I still had the issue, like if I just lifted it up, that the springs, they just need a little bit more oomph in my opinion. And so in order to do that, I decided to do the lift with the two inch blocks as well as the sumo springs. I figured if I add those two together and I do the combination there, I don't think that I'll ever have to worry about this again. Which brings us to the prospected benefits of doing this combination. So the benefit's gonna be the camper's gonna have a minimum of two inches of lift at all times. It's gonna have a little bit more of that because of the sumo springs too with a stiffer suspension. And so, because of that, I don't think that I'm going to have this issue ever again. For my situation, for the weight of the camper, I think that this is going to be a great solution. Now, it's not going to be as good as some of those other solutions that I mentioned earlier, but I think that it will be a good solution. Also, this is going to cause the camper to ride a little bit more level with my truck. My truck's pretty tall. I've always had an issue with the camper kind of being a little bit nose high, not very much. It's not very noticeable, but this is going to fix that. So I'm pretty pumped about it. Talk about possible side effects that are negative. So number one, I'm not a professional. I'm just an average everyday guy. I've never did any suspension work or anything. And that's one reason that I came down here to have Shelburne's help me out on that. And, you know, so you're going to do this stuff at your own risk. If, if you choose to do this, I'm just showing you what I did. Okay. And I'm going to share with you some comments that I got from Facebook land. Now, number one, the video where I saw the lift blocks, they said that they've never had a problem with a two inch block, but they have had issues with larger blocks. So they don't recommend anything over two inches, which two inches is all I was going to go for anyway. However, I've read on Facebook, some people say you should never put a camper on a lift block. Um, I had one guy say that there was all kinds of torque issues that can happen to, to the brakes and stuff. I don't really, I mean, I understand there's some pressure on there when the brakes are on, but I wouldn't really say anything with torque because you don't have a drive axle on your camper. Um, I believe that all these forces are gonna be very minimal with the two inch steel block, I think that that's gonna be fine. I believe the video that I watched, they used a solid two inch block where we're using steel tubing. Um, Steve assures me that the steel tubing is gonna be more than beefy enough and he uh, boxed those in a little bit or something. We'll go over that in a minute. Something else you're gonna have to worry about if you decide to put something in there to lift your camper up, it's obviously clearance. Now, my half ton Keystone Cougar is only 12 foot high. So it's not 13 something like a lot of these big massive fifth wheels. So I don't feel like I have to worry about anything there because that two inches isn't gonna make a big difference. I am gonna plan on remeasuring everything 
and knowing exactly what my height is so I don't have any issues there. But as far as everyday life, going from like 12 foot tall to 12 foot two, that's not going to change anything about 99.8% of underpasses or anything like that. Also something that you would think about just from thinking about this is that you may be changing your center of gravity a little bit higher. Um, but at the same time, going back to my camper's only 12 foot high. It's only a two inch difference. I don't think that there's gonna be any issue there as far as it being top heavy all of a sudden or anything like that. Now the last negative point that I can say that could happen is this suspension is gonna be quite a bit stiffer now. And so you're gonna have a stiffer suspension that is going to translate a lot more of the uh, bumps and stuff from the road through the frame, through the trailer, to the appliances, all that stuff. Theoretically, you could have this mess something up because you're stiffening the suspension. So like it's bouncing everything in the trailer more, if that makes sense. Everything from the frame to the furnace to anything like that where you got the propane lines, fridge, all the components in the fridge, especially on a, a rear kitchen. Uh, that's the one negative side effect that you read about rear kitchens is that they're on the very back of that uh, fulcrum. So whenever you're going over a bump or something, you know, you have a little bit of softening right over the axle, but they're very on the very end. And so they're just taking a pounding back there. But I feel like this is gonna be okay. And I'll have to let you know if I was wrong in the future. Now I do suspect that the CMO Springs being made out of um, some type of polymer is going to still have some cushion in there. And so I don't, th I think that that's gonna mitigate that risk. All right, so this is Steve with Shelburne RV. So like I told you, I'm doing most of our uh, intro here alone, but I told you I'd go back and have him share his viewpoints about some certain stuff here. Well, good morning, welcome to Shelburne RV. So I guess we're getting ready to do a two inch lift on your camper this morning. Uh, so, I think we originally talked about you doing some sumo bushings or... Yeah, we were going to do the sumo springs and then I saw the lift and I was like, well, would this work? And you said, yeah, I think so. Um, but I think you didn't know I was crazy enough to say, let's do both. <laughs> um, just because I don't want any more issues out of it. Right, right. So, I've actually gotten some uh, 3 16 wall, 2 by 2 square tubing. Uh, cap the ends, welded it all up, so there's no way it's gonna it's gonna crush. Uh, and I've gotten some seven and a half inch long, uh, three inch wide uh, bolts to hold it all on there. So we're gonna go in here and um, I've done a lift on an enclosed trailer once, but we used we used some big old square tube, and it was on a race trailer that we jacked up and did that way. So we're gonna it should work fine. We're gonna find out. <laughs> All right, so as far as the positive points of doing this, what I've come to figure out is number one, you know, I think that I'm not gonna have any issues with this rubbing anymore because I'm gonna have a minimum of two inches of lift in there yeah. with a more rigid suspension. Well, and I think the biggest thing for you, not only was it rubbing underneath the uh, wheel wells, but also I think it was, a, some of it that I saw was a clearance issue on your bed, uh, normally, if he's in and out of campgrounds and the bed is moving this way, uh, sometimes we can get into the, the bottom of the camper. And so, you know, I've got another customer that if this, if this works out well, we're gonna possibly do it to his camper on a, uh, on a fifth wheel because he has a, has a Dodge very similar to yours that sits up a little higher and he's having some rub issues in and out of campgrounds. So if it works out, you know, maybe something we do on his camper also. It is a little bit nose high when I have it hooked up because of that. And the little bit of rubbing that I have had and what he's talking about is under the phylon um, on the bottom around the fifth wheel hitch, it has dug in a little bit. And that's my soft topper because I have one inch rails that go around the side and the bracket there that holds the uh, back window onto that it can dig into there a little bit. Now I will say that most of that was doing things that most uh, sane people are not gonna do in their fifth wheel. I tend to go back boondocking <laughs> kinda out in the woods a little bit. And you know, I figure it's not gonna cause any 
water issues or leaks being on the bottom side of that and so i hadn't really worried about it but yeah it kind of irritated me a little bit when i first seen what happened but i've not had any issues like i have had it rub the side of the bed one time like hardcore um but that was kind of slow and very controlled because i knew that that was going to happen um but something else we got to watch out for well, and again, you know, you are doing a little bit of off-roading probably that most people are not going to do. You know, there's a few campgrounds around here where the transition trying to get in and out of the campground um, can rub. Chester Frost is definitely one of those places where I did have it happen at Chester you kind of go out of there and can rub on there. But on another note with the other gentleman that has the camper, you know, one of the biggest reasons why I like to see that run as level as we can, again, it comes back to ammonia refrigeration. Uh, the ammonia refrigerators have got to run as level as we can. Now, um, obviously running up and down the road if they're moving and wobbling and you know, that momentary unlevelness is not really a problem. But again, if your camper is running down the road at an angle um, over a period of time, obviously then that, that hinders us in our cooling ability of the, of the ammonia refrigerator because it's all gravity fed. So um, obviously that would be one of my biggest concerns normally if you're running up and down the road. now. Obviously, Gimpy's doing a little more off-road and maybe most people don't, but, and that's okay. Um, but again, you know, just trying to keep that camper one level two, just trying to make sure it's not into the back of your truck. Well, let's talk about possible negative side effects of this. So this is what I've come up with. Okay. Number one, um, like I say, it does raise the camper up. So there is an issue where you could have, um, you could rate, make it a little bit more top heavy, but my camper's only 12 foot high, number one, and not 13 foot like some others. So I don't think I'm gonna have any issue with that or any clearance issues. Which we are gonna recheck, just so that way you know, because again, if you don't know your clearance on your camper, you need to find out because there's a bridge close to here that eats a lot of campers. And if you don't know, you need to measure that. And so again, with us doing this, we are gonna remeasure the height. So that way Barrett knows um in his mind of how tall his camper is and the only other issue that i can think about that could be a possible negative um would be that i am stiffening that suspension with that medium density sumo spring and so you are going to have a lot more of those bumps and stuff translated yeah. through the camper through the frame and the appliances especially with the rear kitchen so that refrigerator is going to take a little bit more of a bashing well and and as cheaply as the rvs are built you know, you're going to find out real quick which cabinets are not put in the best. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so kind of got all of our parts laid out here, kind of show you guys what, what we got going on. Obviously, with us raising the camper, we're going to have to put some longer U-bolts on there. I'm hoping those are going to be the right length. Um, according to what he's got now, they should be. Of course, he's got a three-inch three inch wide axle, so should work out. Worst case, we'll just have to go get some uh got the metal blocks made you can see measure that out on on his shackle now and then cut the tubing and then i enclosed it on both sides welded it up spray painted it got all that done and then he's got the new sumo kit and this is the actual and i guess it's all about density um you know it depends on the, the density and how much spring load and blue ones are less the these blue are ones are less stiff. and these are more stiff so these are the real aggressive ones okay and I have one that's more aggressive than that. Okay. And so I wanted to stiffen it up a little bit. Um, so I chose to go with the medium. Okay. And then, and then it's got these spacers. We're gonna have to do some measurement underneath there to figure out what the space is. And then the kit obviously comes with some bracketry that we've got to install, obviously Loctite to make sure we Loctite the parts on so they don't fall off when he's out um, four wheeling through the woods. So we'll get all that Loctite on there. So. There's all the parts. We're going to go out here and see what we can do.
All right, guys, so we got done with the project. Everything's looking good as far as I'm concerned. We're gonna talk about that a little bit first, and then we'll talk about some issues that we had and some ways we had to change our plan up. So what do you think about the finished product? I, I think it turned out good. I don't think we raised it enough where it's gonna be a, a dangerous situation. Obviously, um, had to change the U-bolts because all the six inch tall U-bolts were not gonna work. So. I had a spring shop um, in Chattanooga that I actually made us some seven and a half inch long ones. And now we had to cut them, but I didn't want to have to make two trips or have to spend the money to make them again. So we just, I think, I think seven and a quarter would probably be a good size for that. Um, but we just went a little, little heavier on the size just to make sure. So I, I think, I think it turned out good. Then the other issue that we had is we started out with some two inch square block, which is what I saw everybody else using. But with our 4,400 pound axles, that block wouldn't fit between the U-bolts. Yeah, uh, inch and three quarters is what we ended up having to do. And so I just had to go get some uh, some one by one square tubing. And then we used some uh, some uh, uh, two by two eighth inch, or I think it was three, th three sixteenth uh, wide uh, angle iron that I laminated together and welded all the way across and cut down and did some, I mean, it was probably a little bit more work. I could have got you some inch and three quarter material but it was going to take us a couple days so i just fabricated some up and made that work and yeah so being a little bit smaller axle it wasn't exactly two inches so that's that's okay we fabricated fabricated it up made it work and with just the u-bolts in those blocks we we accomplished quite a bit there and you know we got a couple inches of lift i think we ended up with a couple more after we put those sumo springs yeah. on and stiffened it up you can actually see most of the tire under the fender now where you couldn't see it before yeah, and he's got actually four inches of clearance now between the top of the tire and the actual floor of the camper now so that definitely helped out tremendously um the sumo springs seem to work good the only thing that we really kind of ran into was really the black pipe for the for the uh, propane the way they ran it down the frame uh, we had a little bit of an interference issue there and fortunately we were able to move the uh, sumos over a little bit and make that work um, because I think just moving that moving that uh, black pipe is just going to be a nightmare in itself so so that's something we're going to keep our eye on for for the long term there just to make sure everything's not causing some issue there one more thing that I wanted to say is Steve started his own channel, Shelburne RV, on YouTube. Um, you swing by and look at some of his videos. They recently had one where they redid a top on an old Winnebago that he's been working on. Uh, so follow along that project, follow his channel. There'll be a link in the description down below. Thanks, Steve. Hey, thank you, sir. Appreciate it, guys. Appreciate you watching. Hey guys, so we are back home. I had a little bit of an issue with the Sumo Springs working out just like I wanted to because it was going to be kind of a pain to move the propane line we got a plan for that so we're going to change it up a little bit so i'm not going to add that part into this video we're going to have a secondary video like a catch-up video on that because we're kind of behind on fixing that issue but i'm going to tell you that the lift blocks have worked out great so far we did end up using it was about an inch and a half uh, square tubing is what we ended up with they didn't have that on stock so we you know fabricated that a little bit like steve said earlier and we did box the ends of those in in the lift block itself you know it's got a hole in the top that way the nut from the spring can go down in there and then we welded a nut on the bottom side of that um, in order to take the place of the bolt that was coming through the spring initially and holding you know the axle in place and so that's why we did that it's working out great. I'll have an update for you when we get those sumo springs straightened out. You know, we mounted them on the frame, just kind of tried to scoot it over a little bit so that it didn't get into our propane line. And by the time I drove like five miles home, they were kind of crooked. Um, so we just took those off, jacked it up, took them off. And we got a plan for that and we'll show you what it is before too long. Working great so far. I got more clearance over my tires. I do got a little bit more clearance here as well, which is what we were going for. But uh, thanks for following, and stay tuned for the follow-up project. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button.